importance of first pass detection, understanding exact earth painted spectrum decollision processing, SDP techniques, comparison of satellite AIS reception techniques, which is onboard, pro, onboard processing versus SDP, the advantages of SDP, the partnership between Exact Earth and Genscape Vessel Tracker. Uh, we'll look at a case study of the North American East Coast, and we'll look at conclusions and what the next steps will be. Right at the end, we'll address the questions that uh, you can, as I repeat, you can, you can post in the box on the right-hand side of your screen during the presentation. That said, and without uh, further delay, I'll now hand over to Adam. Thanks, Simon. So with air vessel tracking technology becoming an essential tool for those active in the maritime industry today, the ability to assess the effectiveness of the service you receive is clearly an important consideration. In order to make an informed decision, we've highlighted three important aspects you need to consider. What percentage of vessels does the satellite see? How long does it take to build up a clear picture of vessel movements within your area of interest? What additional information is provided by the satellite? Throughout this webinar, we'll explore these questions and present the facts, enabling you to make a more informed decision on what really is important when interpreting satellite AIS data. First pass detection, or FPD, is the most effective measurement of a satellite's constellation's ability to detect a high percentage of ships during a single pass. Because vessels are not static, a high FPD is of paramount importance. Not only is it important to see a high percentage of vessels, but the time taken to build up this picture is just as critical. Multiple passes take time, and vessels may have moved into or out of a satellite's field of view during the time it's taken another pass. Therefore, high FPD rates are critical for a proper and accurate identification and correlation of vessels' position, ETA, and destination. 75% FPD rate is considered to be the benchmark for good vessel detection. Exact Earth is the only provider to hit this 75% detection rate every time. So this illustration highlights the benefits of FPD uh, when combined with spectrum decollision processing or SDP. And I'll go on to explain exactly what SDP is uh, later on in this webinar. But it's clear to see uh, when we look at the right-hand side, it will take up to four passes for onboard processing to match the same level of unique MSIs when using the FDP and spectrum decollision processing, also known as SDP. Exact Earth's painted technique for SDP is the most effective process for capturing AIS measurements. Industry standard on onboard processing, or OBP, works by interpreting AIS signals on the satellite and then transmitting the process back down to Earth. In comparison, SDP listens and captures all AIS signals from across the AIS radio spectrum before transmitting the raw, unprocessed data back to dedicated exact Earth base stations. Um, so just to elaborate on that, how this was explained to me um, was, you know, you, you're at a conference and there's hundreds of people all talking at the same time, and there's a lot of noise, and all the conversations start to get blended together. If you were working like an OVP satellite, uh, you'd be trying to 
interpret every voice and conversation from the rest of the noise by listening and trying to identify who said what, writing everything down as fast as you could, and then sending your notes back to your client. Um, using this method, um, I'm sure you agree, you, you've missed a lot of information. However, if, if you had a special listening device that worked just like SDP satellites, that listened and recorded all the noise and send it back to a voice recognition system, you would have every exact conversation uh, from each individual. So once received by the ground station, powerful computing is applied to decode multiple NIS reports more quickly and accurately by using highly specialized algorithms. SDP addresses the issues of satellite receiver saturation and time slot collisions in high traffic locations, uh, such as uh, China Sea. This results in significantly higher ship detection rates against standard ODP and achieves a benchmark detection rate of at least 75% of ships within your area of interest on the first pass every time. So comparing OBP and SDP side by side, it's once again clear the benefits of this patented technique. So the slide we're looking at here illustrates uh, one pass, and I must stress that, this is one pass. And using the SDP processing, we see up to nine times more vessels compared with OBP. Well, the advantages of FDP? Well, they're threefold. It gives the maximum first pass yield for ship detection. This makes it much easier to properly correlate vessel positions with consistent radar imagery and allows for deeper insight into the behavior of the fleets of interest. SDP captures multiple vessel positions, reports, and receives more message five, static and voyage information transmitted by the vessels. This additional information enhances your ability to identify vessel voyage or destination changes quickly, allowing you to act on this information before the competition and perform in-depth analysis into vessel behavior and traffic patterns. SDP addresses the issue of satellite receiver saturation in high density areas, such as Malacca Straits, the Mediterranean, reducing issues such as time slot collision, which affect OBP. During 2014, Exact Earth and Genscape Vessel Tracker extended our exclusive uh, partnership and combined we have the largest privately owned AIS receiver network on the planet with the most advanced and reliable dedicated AIS satellite constellation available. This gives us the best-in-class vessel detection, with over 120,000 vessels tracked every day. Best global coverage, high fidelity tracking of ships in all major shipping areas, cutting edge and unique technology, keeping you one step ahead of the competition. Unparalleled customer service, bespoke solutions tailored to individual needs, and a total commitment to the maritime AIS with a sole focus within the AIS and maritime environment. So this is just one example of how we work with, with, our, uh, with our clients. Uh, in our experience, Genscape Vessel Tracker has always provided high quality, reliable data when and where it is needed. So recently, Genscape Vessel Tracker won uh, a contract to supply the European Commission's Joint Research Center with data for their maritime transport study. This study required a large amount of data, including historical positions, vessel port calls, and combining this with our ship characteristics. 
A major area of focus for this tender was the, the number of vessels captured and the frequency of the positions. Genscape Vessel Tracker scored over 90% for this element, further highlighting the importance of superior FPD rates and the power of SVP technology. Another example of how we work in partnership with our clients, uh, building long-term relationships. I'll just pick one line out. We have consistently and consistently impressed with their dedication of data quality excellence and commitment to customer service. And with that, I would like to pass you over to our partners at Exact Earth. Um, Bruce, over to you. Thanks very much, Adam. Um, I want to review a case study that was done uh, on the east coast of North America. Uh, this was uh, done on September 17th of last year. And uh, if you look at the picture on the right-hand side of the slide, you'll see the, the region that uh, is outlined there. Uh, a competitor using OBP had claimed a uh, detection rate of 3,000 MIMSIs uh, within this AOI compared to Xactor's 2,000 MIMSIs. Uh, when we ran the study, uh, the results of the following uh, case show that Exactors SDP technology outperformed OBP using both its premium, which is the combined and satellite, uh, combined satellite and terrestrial, as well as the enhanced feeds, uh, satellite only, with uh, 6,656 and 4,399 vessels detected respectively. Furthermore, one Exactors uh, satellite pass using SDP was able to detect 3,000 621 vessels in a single pass, 21% more than OBP technology. The results on the, from a premium feed, which is the combined satellite and terrestrial, uh, Exactors satellite constellation combined with the Genscape Vessel Tracker terrestrial network detected uh, over 6,600 MIMSIs within a 24-hour period uh, with the vessel class broken down uh, in the uh, table below. The coastal network detected over 2,200 MIMSIs that were not seen by the satellite network. Uh, approximately 50% of those were Class B vessels, which do pose a challenge for uh, some space-based assets. One of the things I wanted to uh, point out here is that the combined Exact Earth and Genscape Vessel Tracker feed outperformed OBP by 121%. The medium revisit time is approximately 86 minutes with average message, messages per vessel of 25. If you have a look here on this slide, you'll see a, a more uh, detailed view of, of the capture, um, the AOI that was captured during these, uh, this study. If we take a look at the enhanced feed, which is the satellite only, uh, Exactors uh, enhanced feed uh, provided full coverage of the st study area and high traffic locations along the coast as well as out to sea uh, beyond the coastal receiver range. Using Exactors satellite constellation, over 4,000 MIMSIs were detected over the 24-hour period, with vessel class broken down again in the table below. Satellite network detected 965 vessels that were undetected by the coastal network. What I'd like to point out here is that Exactor SDP technology outperformed OBP by 46%. The medium revisit time uh, is approximately 144 minutes or about 10 times per day with an average uh, messages per vessel about 17. Some of the conclusions that we can draw from this uh, case study, uh, Exactor's premium feed detected uh, over 6,600 MIMSIs which is more than 3,500 uh, more than the OBP. Premium feed also saw 2,257 MIMSIs more than the enhanced feed. Some of the factors contributing to that are uh, that Class B vessels tend to remain uh, within coastal receiver range, hence they are more likely to be detected by the coastal receivers. Uh, Class B vessels transmit at about uh, half the power as Class A vessels, making them harder to detect from space-based assets. And vessels of both classes, when close to the coast, are often moored or berthed, 
and that means that they only transmit roughly every uh, two to three minutes, um, whereas the vessels in transit are transmitting approximately every two to five seconds. The enhanced feed, uh, satellite only, uh, detected 965 MIMSIs undetected by the coastal network. These vessels were uh, beyond the view of the coastal receivers. Exactors SDP enabled satellites outperformed OBP by 21% in terms of the first pass detection. Exactors detection rate has not only improved uh, because of the increase in space-based assets, but also due to better data processing uh, and adjustments made to the space-based receivers. I'll, uh, with that, I'll, I'll hand that back over to Adam. Thanks, Bruce. <clears throat> so let's revisit the question posed at the beginning of the webinar. What percentage of vessels does the satellite see? Exact Earth is the only provider to hit the 75% detection benchmark every time. How long does it take to build up this picture? With painted SDP technology, uh, sorry, techniques, Exact Earth is able to detect more vessels in less time than using industry standard OBP. What additional information is provided? By providing additional message five and static data, users gain true insight into the vessel behavior and can quickly react to changes in voyage and destination. To find out more or to request a trial, please visit the, the link shown below. And finally, this testimony really supports uh, what we have been discussing today and the, the benefits of first path detection and spectrum decollision technology. The AIS data, they, being Genscape Vessel Tracker, are able to provide through their exclusive partnership with Exact Earth is excellent compared to what we've received from other suppliers in the past. Well, thank you very much, um, Adam and Bruce. Uh, very interesting indeed. Um, uh, I've got one or two questions that have been posed by the audience. Um, and the first one is for you, actually, Adam. Um, how do you determine if the data is from terrestrial or from satellite airs? OK, so all of that data, not only is it time stamped, it's also uh, source stamped as well. So when we receive the information, uh, we can actually provide to our clients, if they want it, where we actually source the data from, whether it is from our terrestrial AIS or our satellite AIS. So bear in mind, we're going to get multiple positions. We'll always take the latest report uh, and send that through. So in answer, everything is, is both time stamped and source stamped. Excellent. Um, I'm sure that's, uh, that's a clear answer to that question. Um, I've got one here for you, Bruce. Um, does the FPD performance vary based on the location? Um, for example, is it much better than 75% in open ocean versus the congested Malacca Strait, for example? Yeah, certainly um, the, the density of vessels do uh, uh, play a, a part in, in how well the detection um, and I would say in, in open ocean, for instance, say a low density area like the South Atlantic, the South Pacific, um, we would reach close to 100%, if not 100% in certain circumstances where um, every time we detect uh, every vessel transmitting AIS. Um, and we have seen that based on, on ground truth um, uh, examples where we, we do see every vessel. So that 75% is, um, is kind of a, I'll call it a minimum, but there are cases uh, in every single pass um, that uh, we will receive 100% of the vessels there. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Bruce. Um, I've got another one here for you, for you, Adam. Do you offer data for use on internal systems? Yep, so um, we, we've got various systems, online systems, uh, which we showed the link to earlier on. Um, but yes, absolutely, the 
uh, case study that we spoke about earlier, or the, sorry, the tender that we spoke about earlier for the uh, Joint Research Center, uh, that was to go into an internal model for them to take our raw data and then add their own proprietary um, and knowledge on top of that information for their actual case study. So absolutely, uh, the answer would be yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, I've got another one here for you, Bruce. Um, why do exact Earth satellites pick up more static or message 5 information than the others? Static 5 or um, uh, message 5 or, or static information, which includes uh, information like destination, uh, and uh, they, they require actually two time slots. So if you think that uh, of, of a radio spectrum is divided up into time slots and um, the just raw AIS messages that uh, transmit the position, they require one time slot um, to be detected and, and decoded. Uh, static messages require two coincident uh, time slots. And the spectrum decollision processing uh, is far more effective at uh, uh, detecting and, and hearing both of those time slots together um, and that's where uh, certainly the spectrum decollision processing comes in uh, very handy to be able to detect those message files. Oh, thank you very much Bruce. Um, and there's a new question just popped up. Are there areas of the world where you do not provide coverage? Adam? <laughs> in short, no. Um, so we, we build up our uh, terrestrial network over the, over the last few years, which uh, provide us up to 30 to 90 nautical miles from the shore. And then once we fuse that with the satellite constellation from our partners at Exact Earth, it gives us global uh, coverage. So all vessels from 300 gross tons and above uh, will be included in our service. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one more for you, Bruce. Um, does Exact Earth combine their data with any other commercial terrestrial pro provider? No, we have an exclusive uh, agreement with uh, Genscape Vessel Tracker, and uh, this has allowed us to certainly build out a, a very strong uh, worldwide coverage, and uh, certainly the the uh, terrestrial coverage that uh, Genscape Vessel Tracker provides is a very good supplement for our satellite data. Oh, thank you very much. Well, we, we, we seem to be running out of time, uh, um, so as, uh, as I've said, um, before we close, um, can I remind you that if your question was not raised um, in this uh, Q&A, we'll be in contact with you shortly to address the query. And um, finally, I'd like to thank you for your interest in this Genscape Vessel Tracker Exact Earth webinar, and can I please encourage you to complete the very short questionnaire at the end of this presentation. Thank you very much for your interest and goodbye for now.